Uh, good morning, uh, everybody. This is Greg reporting from the basement. I got into uh, audio equipment in 1974. Um, I just knew at an early age that I, I really was into uh, not just music, but listening to music and listening to it in a, in a way that just sounded really good and uh, kind of reproduced the music as it should be. So that's when I pretty much caught the bug. But my first system I bought in 1974 was pretty simple. It was the receiver, two speakers, and a turntable. Um, all analog, and I think later on, I added a pair of B speakers and an equalizer. But still, everything was analog, everything was simple. You know, I was a 14-year-old kid. I'll flash forward 44 years, and obviously things have changed a lot since then. I see a lot of blogs, YouTube videos, people asking questions, fighting about whether MQA is viable. Um, do speaker cables matter? Um, if you're all analog, you're an idiot. If you're all digital, you're an idiot. Um, don't waste your money on this. Uh, you know, how, what speaker should I get for a thousand dollars? Do cables matter? Yeah, you know, just the list goes on and on. Obviously, so. Uh, there's a lot of uh, people I've seen on the internet, like I said, on YouTube or their own blogs or whatever, like uh, Paul from PSB, uh, the gentleman from Upscale Audio, whose name escapes me right now. There's Zero Fidelity. There's Steve Guttenberg that does his daily show. Um, and, uh, you know, those guys know their stuff. And uh, they get a lot of questions and they answer them. So I just wanted to put something out from a guy who has no professional background, who just has been into this stuff for 44 years, and uh, kind of my perspective on some of these things. Um, kind of what spurred this is somebody asked Paul from PS Audio whether it's okay to de um, create a home theater and two channel um, listening room in one environment. And, uh, to be honest with you, I, I think Paul kind of thought it probably wasn't the greatest idea, and I can definitely understand why, but I would say everybody's situation is different. Some people have the space to do two rooms, some people don't. Some people have to do everything in a, in a, in a living room that is, is shared with um, their family, and they have to uh, have the wife's blessing, and don't, you know, don't slam people that take their wife's opinion into consideration. I mean, if my wife wanted to paint my whole house with nothing but flowers, I would have a problem with that. So if your wife has a problem having 16 foot black boxes in your living room, you should, I think you should be understanding about that. But, uh, you know, my, the way I look at it is whatever works for you, and of course, we all want other people's opinions and their, you know, uh, like I said, I've been doing this for a long time. I've been into this for a long time and I have a lot of friends and coworkers who will ask me my opinion because they know that this is my passion and it has been for a long time. So, of course, you want to get advice from those people. But at the end of the day, you have to do what works for you. If you want to do all vinyl, that's great. If you want to do no vinyl and all digital, that's great. If you want to spend $10 on speaker wire or $5 on speaker wire, or you want to spend $5,000 on speaker wire, whatever, whatever sounds best to you and your ears, I say that's what you go with. I see a lot of people asking advice on what speaker should I get for X amount of dollars. Well, again, that, that's all personal choice. What those people like and what you might like could be completely different. Picking speakers can be very um, a daunting task because unless you um, go to Best Buy and want something that they have, which there's nothing wrong with that, don't get me wrong, but they have a limited supply in there. Another thing to consider is their speakers are not set up in a typical listening environment. They're in these huge open spaces. What they sound like in the showroom and what they're going to sound like in your room could be significantly different. I'm sure a lot of you know that the room makes a huge difference. And so on um, the speakers I have now, I 
live in Ohio and I bought them off a guy in Wisconsin. Um, I took a chance because uh, I, heard, I heard so many great things about them and I figured, well, if I get them and I don't like them, I'll turn around and resell them because the resale, they, they seem to, uh, they're a highly regarded speaker, not to beat a, a dead horse, but the Aerial Acoustic 70s, which is what I'm listening to right now. Um, and I figured, you know, this way I'll hear them in my room with my taste in music. And, and you know, like I said, I took a chance. I bought them used and I got them for nearly half off what they would have cost me new retail at the time. So that's also something to consider. And I pay with PayPal. So if they came and I had them fully insured, so if they came like all banged up or there was like a crack, like one of the uh, cones was cracked or the anything like that, I had some recourse. And, you know, I'm glad I took that chance because I can honestly say that I don't ever see needing to upgrade those speakers at all. That's how much I like them. The amplifiers I have right now, I bought through Music Direct because they came with, uh, I believe there's is either 60 or 90 day return policy. If you don't like them, they'll take them back. Of course, you have to pay return shipping. I don't think there's a restocking fee. There might be, but I don't recall having heard that from them. Um, so there are alternatives to going out and having to travel around the globe to hear everything you'd like to hear. Read reviews, um, but again, realize that what the reviewer or reviewers like and what you like could be completely different. Um, I have a combination room. I do mostly two channel in this room. I do, I watched Thor, the latest Thor last night and it sounded great in here and it looked great in here. I'm more into the audio side of things than the video side. Um, you know, and let's face it, the people who, like us who are really, really want to get a good system are not the norm. Most people, and God bless them, are, are perfectly happy with a, like a Bluetooth speaker, like say a Sonos or something like that, which I have too. For, and for like background casual listening, it's great, you know, and uh, or a, just a sound bar because they don't want to be running wires all over the place. Or again, the wife acceptance factor, all that stuff comes into play. Of course it does. Um, but, you know, but then there's people like me and like some of you that might be watching this video where you want the next step up. And I've been doing the next step up for 44 years now, slowly, mostly, but... Um, to kind of get me where I am today and you know luck I'm, I'm lucky enough that I you know I'm a blue collar guy I work hard I work overtime you know so it it affords me the luxury of spending more than most people would on my on an AV hobby but it's I love it I mean I can come down here and after a rough day of work you know some people will sit back and maybe have a couple drinks or whatever and that's great and there's nothing wrong with that but me I would rather sit down here and just decompress and listen to some really good music and maybe have one drink <laughs> or sometimes zero or sometimes a few more than that but you know I'm getting off track that's not the point I love this stuff I always have and uh you know and again it kills me that there has to be wars I'm QA it sucks it's it's not you know of course, everything, there should be science applied to everything. It's natural. But listen to your ears. Trust your ears. If it sounds good to you, great. If it doesn't, that's fine. Nobody is forcing MQA down your throat. Nobody is forcing vinyl down your throat. Nobody is forcing 4K down your throat. Nobody is forcing multi-channel music down your throat. It's all up to you. And... It drives me crazy when the people are just so, like, stuck and refuse to keep an open mind to anything. I have just about every format. I even picked up a reel-to-reel -reel deck recently because my dad had one, and it just... I remember just loving to make mixtapes and stuff on a reel-to-reel, -reel, so I went and picked one up. I have, a, you know, a DAC that does MQA. I have a turntable. I have multi-channel music. I, I listen to a lot of stereo music. I have a... A pretty outrageous home theater set up with 17 speakers and four subwoofers and 
The reason I did four subwoofers is because it gives me a much more even bass response throughout the room. With one, you know, one will work, absolutely one speak, but it just makes it the room placement much more um, tricky if you're only using one to get it right throughout the room. And I bought all of them used. Every single one of my subwoofers was used. I get a lot of like dealer demos and I always make sure that I have some kind of re recourse. I've only had one bad experience with all the used stuff I've bought and I got my money back on it because the guy sold me a five channel amp and only three of the channels worked. So I got my money back through PayPal. The guy didn't fight it. So, you know, don't be afraid to take a chance and, don't, and just know that what works for somebody else might not work for you and vice versa. Um, you know, the, the, the subwoofers that I have are all sealed and servo controlled. To me, they're much cleaner for music and they're, they're absolutely fine for home theater. Now there's the guys out there that want the, you know, the huge 18s that are ported. And I'm not saying that they're not good, they are, but they're much, they're, they put out a lot more. If you want that slam, if you want, you know, Thor's hammer to shake your whole room and, and crack your drywall, those will do it. And I, maybe that, sound, that didn't sound right. You know, a lot of them can be articulate too, but to me, a sealed and servo-controlled subwoofer is more articulate and more musical than some big 18 ported, you know? And if you want to disagree with me, that's fine. That's, that's the thing about this. That's my opinion. That's not a fact. That's just what I prefer. So I guess what I'm trying to say is whatever works for you, it works for you. If it doesn't work for everybody else, don't worry about it. Don't sweat it. At the end of the day, it's your it's your home. It's your it's your living room or your dedicated room, like I have. It's your you know if you have young children at home or you don't, like mine are all grown up now. You know all those things come into play. And obviously, your budget. You know if you can afford five hundred bucks for a system, great. If you can afford five hundred thousand dollars for a system, God bless you. So uh, I guess I'll, uh, I'll end there, and um, I just wanted to get my two cents out. So, uh, you know, as always, if you guys have any comments or questions on anything, just leave them. And uh, again, don't let anybody bully you, or I shouldn't say bully, that's a too strong of a word. Don't let anybody else's strong opinion be the be-all, end-all for you, because um, it shouldn't be. All right, thanks.